Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Alien Protocols, the Advanced Protocols Data Project. So in this video, we're going to dive more into meta materials. This is a very important question, I think, in terms of answering whether we're truly being visited or not, and by whom and what. I think the actual materials can tell us a lot about them. Well, <clears throat> what are metamaterials first? A metamaterial is basically an artificial material that has certain abilities pro uh, programmed into it that this material can produce under certain circumstances. Um, the definition here is a composite material engineered to exhibit peculiar properties. Um, example, negative refraction, meaning light basically gets absorbed by it, essentially, and it, the object becomes invisible. It doesn't reflect light, and thereby you can't see it. Uh, there's other things you can incorporate into metamaterials, other abilities. In fact, uh, you can judge how technically, technologically advanced a civilization is by how many different abilities they can program into how small of a space at how little of an energy expenditure, both in terms of the creation of the material and in terms of the material usage for its abilities. Um, and that's a real interesting way of determining how advanced a civilization is. Um, you can imagine a civilization putting a bunch of different abilities into a material if it could do that. What are these abilities and what are the things you can do? Well, this is an example of uh, how they use a ferrite loaded material to create a waveguide, meaning it, it uh, creates a, a directional wave, a direction that it makes the energy propagate in. So it forces the energy to go in a certain vector, a certain direction. This is a gentleman named Frank Zendarsik, who has done a lot of experiments with anti-gravity and cold fusion and propulsion, and he's made quite a few interesting discoveries about uh, superconducting rotating disks, and not only that, but also microstructures and certain uh, resonances. And if you resonate a certain microstructure, uh, it can have anti-gravitational properties. And in fact, these structures don't have to just be resonated by radio frequencies. They can be resonated by other things as well. This is the very famous arts parts. This is uh, the piece of UFO that was given to uh, radio talk show host Art Bell, who kept it in a safe for uh, many years. And it went to Dr. Hari at Carnegie Science. And uh, they discovered that it has extra solar properties meaning its composition indicates that it was created outside of our solar system. There are certain elemental purities and strange peculiarities about this uh, material. First of all, it acts as a wave, wave guide for a certain terahertz, a certain frequency of terahertz. And uh, also it has purities that are not found in nature, but also that are uh, very interestingly multi-layered. Uh, magnesium, and zinc combination, mostly magnesium, like 96% magnesium and like 93% zinc, and then a tremendous purity of bismuth. And if you look at this little side right here above the quarter there, just remember that shape. It's going to look like a, a, a piece that Hal put off showed. Um, also, they find out uh, different things about this material and different qualities, like you can hit it with a low frequency um, resonance and it can create a strong magnetic field. Uh, these are some of the specific uh, hertz and frequencies that it operates in um, 4.7 to 5.6 terahertz um, and the wavelength range is, is 53 to 63 microns very very interesting material and here's the uh, uh, elementary uh, composition of the material this is the dark side of what you can see here is called the skin and this is from 1996, so this is from Dr. Hari. And you can see the magnesium, incredibly pure magnesium and a tiny little bit of zinc. And uh, very interesting. So the shiny side is much more pure um, magnesium, a tiny percentage of zinc. <clears throat> and this is the uh, scanning electron microscope, and that's at uh, 60 millimeters. Look how cool that layer is. And look how it's wavy. Do you think that it was became wavy like that in the crash, or it was constructed wavy like that to activate certain resonances? 
So what are the different applications? What are things you can do with this metamaterial? Well, it can be used just in its construction, just in its shape to pick up certain frequencies. So it can be like an antenna for certain spy devices. It can be used as a cloaking device, as we said before, to absorb light. It can be used to resonate at the right frequency where it essentially allows the craft that it's in to uncouple from the gravity field that it's in. It can even act as a super lens, meaning we would have the most incredible optics ever, uh, that this can concentrate uh, optical um, uh, indexes and basically allow you to see clearer than you've ever seen before. So this would be used in spy craft and different types of uh, suborbital reconnaissance vehicles, perhaps. And of course, the interesting thing about metamaterials is it's in different scales, in different size scales. It can be large all the way from like 2D flat um, objects um, to carbon nanotubes, which is pretty large, more like the molecular kind of level, uh, and have nanopolymers. You could use metamaterials to create certain paints that would have amazing abilities. You could also use it to create uh, magnetic nanowires a bundle of wires that could do quite astonishing things uh, depending on the desire. Um, you know that chameleons have little wires at the end of their little feet, allowing them to climb things. So there's all sorts of amazing different possibilities. Plus you can engineer stuff all the way down to the atomic scale, all the way to the right here. And you can uh, adjust the angle of atomic spins and do all sorts of things and create some truly, truly magic material that can do incredible incredible things. So uh, there are people like Hal Putoff and other others, uh, companies around the world who are experimenting with metamaterials like this piece here. And they have to do it in a soundproof room like this, because as you can imagine, if you're dealing with certain resonances, you don't want any outside waves to come in and either amplify or negate the waves you're working with or interfere in any way. So they have to have very insulated rooms. And of course, these UFOs utilize metamaterials in their skin. And you can imagine a lot of different potential uses for this uh, metamaterial and the different functions they could incorporate into the material itself. Oh, this is actually a drawing we did about almost a year ago about uh, the metamaterial experiments Hal Putoff was doing on some of this material. And we drew this in the larger soundproof room and everything. Anyway, here's that other angle of this uh, piece of arts parts, the UFO piece that uh, Hal Putoff uh, showed in his slide presentation. So in the construction of a metamaterial, basically how you would do it is from the molecular level, you'd, we've talked about this before in previous videos, the devices that could be used to create the metamaterial, but first you would decide all the different abilities you would want in it. And the metamaterial is not gonna be like it shows on the screen here, it's not gonna be one layer does one ability. They're all actually uh, intertwined based on, it's basically addition and subtraction um, problem of once you get your, you, you create your list of abilities and then the different um, elements and sh uh, shapes that are required to uh, create that ability. And then when you compare and contrast that with the other abilities, you manufacture a substance that will not look like this in lines. It would have its own unique properties. But, uh, and in fact, it might just look wavy, like we showed before. So um, this is just utilized as a, a visual tool. They're not actually in perfect uh, layers like this. Um, but you would incorporate different abilities, like invisibility, uh, protection layer versus uh, cosmic rays and, and other exterior uh, dangers. You could create an electromagnetic field generator, two toruses that could be used for perhaps anything from propulsion to protection. You could engineer anti-gravity microstructures within the, the structure of the actual skin of the, the craft so that when the material is resonated, these micro lattices, these microstructures, it would, the whole craft would take on an anti-gravitic uh, property. It would uncouple from the gravity field locally and thereby require just a tiny bit of energy to move it forward. You could program into the construction of the skin sensory receivers that would uh, receive all sorts of different electromagnetic field um, 
waves and be able to interpret them. You might also want to incorporate into the construction of the shell of the craft the ability to transmit different waves and uh, frequencies for different reasons at different focal points on the craft. You might want to incorporate the computational abilities of the craft because it certainly would need computational abilities no matter what. Uh, you might want to incorporate some sort of either entanglement or gravity wave communication system where you could communicate over vast distances instantly so that the craft could be either controlled from the distance or controlled like an avatar or at least uh, be able to communicate its findings and uh, different incidents that it encounters. How about energy generation? What if you had a tiny bit of uh, radioactive elements like let's say uranium or different things incorporated into the skin of the craft that would power the craft. If you were so efficient, you could create a topological insulator out of the skin of the craft so that the skin of the craft utilizes such a tiny bit of energy because nothing is wasted. All the energy is utilized by these different layers somehow. What if you incorporated shape-shifting, the ability for the skin of this craft to move? Oh, for doors to open, for uh, screens to appear, for the shape to change, depending on different uh, aeronautical conditions. And what if your final inside layer might have to actually be separate, um, an internal protection layer to protect the organic occupants from any type of radiations? So a, a metamaterial skin could do a lot of different things, especially a really advanced civilization could program a lot of abilities into a little bit of space at a very little energy cost and usage. What do you guys think? What kind of abilities do you think they must do in yours?